The summer of 1919 marked the worst year of racial violence against black people since the days of enslavement in the U.S. So much blood was shed that the poet and activist James Weldon Johnson coined it the Red Summer. I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. Both black and white soldiers were returning from having served overseas in World War I. Since 1910, there had been a mass exodus of over one million black people from the South. They were escaping the humiliation of Jim Crow segregation and the lack of job opportunities. When white soldiers returned from service, they were dismayed to find that black workers had been hired for many of the factory jobs that they had once held. The economy was in pretty bad shape, and they found themselves competing with black people for adequate housing as well. The newly reestablished Klan was also making a show of itself, conducting a record number of lynchings. The victim of which were overwhelmingly black. All of those factors came together to make a perfect storm of resentment, economic insecurity, white supremacy, and fear. The newly established NAACP was helping to bring a sense of organization and legitimacy to the struggle for black liberation and equality. This generation of African Americans had aspirations of advancement in a society that fought them at every turn. They lovingly dubbed themselves the New Negroes to indicate that they intended to establish new ground rules for how they were to be treated in society. Incidents of white violence began to break out in cities all over the North and Midwest. American textbooks have problematically termed these incidents as race riots, when in reality they were exhibitions of white rage in response to black advancement. If black people were perceived to exercise any sense of agency, they were reminded, often violently, to stay in their place. Black veterans wearing their military uniforms in public, black children swimming in the white section of Lake Michigan, rumors of black men making advances towards white women, black sharecroppers in Arkansas organizing for better wages and working conditions, all were taken by whites as an indication that black people were overstepping their bounds and needed to be chastised. Charleston, South Carolina, Longview, Texas, Bisbee, Arizona, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Illinois, Knoxville, Tennessee, Omaha, Nebraska, and Elaine, Arkansas all became cauldrons of racial hate in the red summer of 1919. Hundreds of people, mostly black, lost their lives in these skirmishes. Because law enforcement often turned a blind eye to these attacks and in many cases facilitated them, black communities began to organize to defend themselves. The 20 so-called race riots in the the red summer of 1919 were characterized by strong, organized black resistance to white violence. Black people were dying, but they were fighting back. Most textbooks in the U.S. devote about one paragraph to these violent attacks. Rather than using accurate terms like racism, white mob violence, and white supremacist attacks, you'll see terms like racial unrest and racial violence and race riots, the implication being that both sides bore equal responsibility for the violence. But in nearly every instance, black people were counterattacking. They were defending themselves. They were fighting back. That generation of new Negroes laid the foundation for the struggle for black agency, black resistance, and black rebellion that would come to define the modern civil rights movement.